I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're exploring the romantic roller coaster of Linda Wong's latest novel. It is called What's Your Number? In the book, you will follow Remy, a newspaper columnist, as she navigates a series of relationships, each bringing new lessons and challenges while her loyal friend Craig is always by her side. Will Remy find love or will her number keep climbing? Tune in to discover the heartfelt journey of love, friendship, and self-discovery. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her amazing books. The links are below this interview. Linda, so good to welcome you back to our show. Thanks for being our guest today. My pleasure. I enjoy this. This is a wonderful process and a great opportunity to um, to share information. So thank you. Well, thank you. I love your books. And uh, so it's great to talk to you. This book is kind of a sequel to Body Count, correct? Yes, it is. Some of the characters continue on and some do not <laughs> for exactly. reasons not to be explained right here. But some of them do not continue into book two. And then book two introduces some new characters, too. One in particular is a lady named Liz. She's a very colorful character. She's an Uber driver, and she adds a lot of dynamic to the storyline. She's uh, very outgoing and very gregarious and loud. And uh, But, the, you know, you love her. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, you need a colorful character like that in a book or a movie <laughs> yeah. or whatever it might be. And uh, I think it's great. Remy's character is interesting as well, since she's a newspaper columnist. She tends to be a writer, an introspective person. Uh, tell us a little bit about her character and how you developed her. Um, she just kind of came into play and I thought, you know, what's a good career for a young woman? And mm -hmm. one who's still kind of developing her career and uh, giving her access to meeting lots of people to kind of match her personality, being very outgoing. And I thought, you know, writing for a newspaper, carrying on a column. Um, so she has a column that is for women. And she had hoped to keep it focused on women's issues, which many times it was. But at one point, it shifted to talking about uh, some of the things younger kids are dealing with because some kids started writing into her column with some of their um, their problems and things they face and wanting some feedback and, and input. So it, it, she kind of included that. So she kind of goes with the flow, whatever uh, seems to be appropriate for her column, as long as it's aimed towards women, women's interests, um, she goes with it. So she goes a lot of different directions with it and just... Um, meets a lot of people, has a lot of interesting experiences, and just really loves her career. And she's yeah. blossoming in it. So. Yeah, absolutely. And Craig is her friend. He's kind of a guy stuck in the friend zone, I guess. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, he's of a different persuasion. He's a, he's a gay male, so he's not... Uh, their friendship is one that's a wonderful friendship, but there's no romance between the two of them. Mm -hmm. um, he had a very... Um, serious love partner. He was very much in love. And unfortunately, that person was succumbed to cancer. So he passed away. So, you know, Craig kind of, you know, I get emotional thinking about Craig. Yeah. <laughs> not My even real. My character died. My character's partner died. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. But you do get so involved. Anyway, they feel like real but, people and uh, real emotions yeah, are attached makes, to these people. Yeah. And he meets someone else. So that's really good. So he has, um, you know, he bounced back and looking at life in a much more positive way now. But he went through times where Remy was by his side, helping him through depression and um, dealing with grief and grief processing and stuff. So they do go to some grief counseling sessions and find that that support just made all the difference in the world. And you know, gave him a new outlook on life. And I think that's another thing that, that friends do. You know, if someone's in crisis, you, you don't just walk away or turn your back. You look at ways, how can I help? You know, how right. can I not, not lecture or be judgmental, but provide assistance, you know, help them find a new direction. So yeah. that's kind of a theme of, of 
what happens between Craig and Remy. So right. it's a warm friendship, you know, ones that just really strong. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. What I love about this book and the uh, prequel to it is the fact that um, you're exploring the modern aspects of dating in 2024 or in the 2020s, yeah. because it's much different today. I mean, the fact that people pick up a phone like this and are swiping <laughs> left and right on pictures and they have unlimited possibilities of people to date make it both wonderful and awful. Tell us a yeah. little bit about your thoughts about dating in 2024. Oh, it's a learning curve. Yeah. <laughs> like one of my sisters said, who read the book, and she's been married for a long, long time. Yeah. You know, one man, she says, oh, my gosh, all the women in these stories, they like they're going through a lot of relationships. Yeah. And I said, unfortunately, you know, and when you get someone my age, that's a lot of years behind me. It does happen. You know, right. it's not like it's not like you're out there being, you know, loose and wild. You're right. just really trying to find a relationship and you stay with one, um, you know, as long as it's working. Mm -hmm. And then when it's not working, if you can't resolve whatever is going on, um, people do move on more. You know, yeah. it's it's not necessary any longer to be stuck in something that is not healthy, not rewarding. Uh, and definitely if it's abusive. Um, it's not the relationship to be in. So yeah. um, you just have to kind of be open for that. But, you know, I think even more important is people have to learn to be happy being single. Mm -hmm. You know, we have such a myth that everyone's got to be married. Everyone's got to have a partner. And that simply is not true anymore. Women can now be very independent, very self-sufficient, um, be engaged in lots of activities, lots of um Oh, volunteer things and charities and social groups that is the myth that you have to be married to be happy is no longer, I don't think, relevant. So I think dating in the this era is, you know, if you're looking for someone to enjoy activities with and, and to share life with, it's wonderful. If it happens, it can be wonderful, but it's not essential to be happy. And I, I think agree. that's the bottom line. I think you have, to be yeah. you have to be yeah. happy in your own company, right? Yeah, that's so yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you this, though. Do you feel like dating in this digital age is kind of problematic because there are so many choices out there that there are basically a lot of temptations out there? And instead of working on relationships and getting through those tough times, that they move on too quickly and they start swiping left and right on their phone again. <laughs> You know, what I'm finding is more and more people are very skeptical about online dating. You know, there's there's just a lot of deception, a lot of lies, a lot of um, falsehoods. And, you know, most people I know still would like to be out there and engaged in things, whether it's church or social groups, and meet someone casually that way. I don't know anybody who's met anybody from an online experience. Um it's hyped up a lot because like you're saying, you can you need to look like you're in a candy store, you know, swipe, right. swipe, swipe, look at this, look at that. Oh, he looks good. But in reality, um, meeting them and uh, really having it develop into something, I think it's kind of slim prospects. And, and when you meet someone who's online, you don't know how many other people he is contacting with or engaged right. with. And uh, it's just a, a door that, I don't know. A lot of people aren't opening anymore. It's interesting to look at, but there's still that wish that just in how I go about doing life, I just hope I meet someone who's out there who's right. doing much of the same things. And, and you know, kind of the old traditional way, the, the online stuff is not necessarily the answer for many yeah. people. Yeah. And I do think you tend to meet a lot of serial monogamists, as they're called, <laughs> where they go from one woman or one man to the other, to the other, to the other. And, uh, you know, it's not what people who are looking for sta uh, stable relationships are necessarily looking for. Right. Right. Now, this is the third book in a trilogy so far, right? You've written three of these yes. books. Mm -hmm. Tell us about book number three. What's that called? Uh, book number three is called Still Counting Bodies. <laughs> and 
<laughs> and uh, Remy has a, a new website that's called stillsingle.com. Mm -hmm. and, and she's uh, doing the same thing, hoping that that approach will, you know, lead her to someone new. Um, she does connect up with um, four other females and they call themselves the Fierce Five. And um, they get involved with just a lot of sharing of a lot of um, their relationship issues. They decide they want to do a trip to Napa Valley. So they pile in the car and they do a road trip um, going down, visiting the various wineries. Um, so, you know, if you've ever gone on wine tours, it, it can be kind of fun. So um, it kind of d explores what they find at the different wineries on their trip. Uh, they do have a, a cafe back home that's called the Pros Cafe. And they ended up, Craig ended up buying the cafe after um, a lady had bought it and uh, had wanted to lease it out and create a book club called Bookworm. And it just did not take off. So he took over the cafe and is trying to figure out what to do with it. So he decided that he wanted to try to work with the Fierce Five to create wine tasting on Saturdays and then go into Saturday night with um, entertainment and a guy named DJ Jamal um, to kind of spin some tunes and, and get the crowd to come in. So they've kind of shifted their focus now to the Pros Cafe. And part of what they were doing in the Napa Valley was to try to find some uh, unique wines that weren't just kind of the run-of-the-mill wines that they could put in this pros cafe for their Saturday wine tasting ventures. So that kind of gives another no whole new direction that they can be creating, you know, activities and events and entertainment for um, the pros cafe. Absolutely. So that's, that's wonderful. I love that. Yeah. It's a great element to the story, no doubt. Let me ask you this question. If you're going to cast a film, who would you have play Remy? Oh, I'm not good with that. <laughs> not good with that. <laughs> I'm not that. good with that either. You know why? Because I don't know any of the new actors. <laughs> I, I, mean, I could say Julia Roberts, but she's like 107 <laughs> now. So that doesn't Oh, work. but she still looks so young. I know. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to turn that question back on you and say, I know. You're I don't know. My, what do you think? <laughs> my other go to is always Jennifer Lawrence, just because yes, yeah. she's got a good, bubbly personality and uh, is kind of serious, but also kind of quirky. So Jennifer Lawrence is Remy. I don't think you and, and Jennifer Jennifer Aniston, she would not be bad at it either. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'm, exactly. Yeah, I'm 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 really so not good with the um, movie stars and actors and and movies. You know, I love movies, but I just don't hang on to that information. Who's who? There's and who too does many what? of them these days. <laughs> yeah. I mean, growing up, we had like Robert Redford and Clint Eastwood and Dustin Hoffman. There were just a handful, but now there's yeah. so much content so out there. Many. That's that right. It's, it's unbelievable. That's for sure. Yeah. These yeah. books are so entertaining. They're really like great romps. They're insightful as well into the personal experience of dating, love, and relationships. Is there a message you hope readers take away from your books? Um, yes. I, again, I think it goes back to the whole notion of friendship. You know, how valuable friendship is and to honor and respect it and nurture it and really be appreciative of the people in your life who are there and are um, know you well and just kind of support you in wherever your journey takes you. Sometimes they're with you on the journey and sometimes they're not, but they're always there, you know, by your side when you need them. And I think that that's the most important thing that um, we need to remember because we can get so wrapped up in our busy little lives and our dramas and whatnot. And sometimes it's nice just to have friends and say, hey, what are you doing? Right, <laughs> you exactly. know, what are you feeling? What's going on? Something's off. Um, it, it's just real valuable. So I yes. just think that's the main thing is, is the value of friendship. I agree. The name of the book is What's Your Number? It's a story about Remy, a newspaper columnist, as she navigates a series of relationships, each bringing new lessons and challenges while her loyal friend Craig is always by her side. Will Remy find love? 
Will her number keep on climbing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to read the book to find out. Fortunately, it's part of a trilogy and more books might be coming and they are all entertaining and you will just love them. Thank you so much for joining us here Thank today. You. Linda. I appreciate your time. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time. I'm and the, the folks who read it, I look well, I welcome any kind of feedback or comments that you have. So um, please reach out to me. You can just find me on, on Facebook or Amazon, Linda Wong, W-O-N-G. Okay, we'll look for you on uh, <laughs> social media. Absolutely. All right.